Well, happy Friday to you and your families. Today's gospel uh, is pretty pretty basic, right? Uh, you know, nothing too much. Same old Jesus preaching, you know, living out the virtuous life, avoiding vice, avoiding sin. Uh, nothing out of the ballpark, right? But I do want to spend some time on today's gospel uh, from Matthew, where Jesus says, He who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, some of you know that I used to be a monk. And in my time in the monastery, which was an extraordinary time that I give thanks to God for, I learned a lot about this particular passage from Matthew about Jesus and what he's saying. Here's what it is. There was a saint named Evagrius, or at least in the Syriac church, he is a saint. He was good friends of Basil and Gregory in Cappadocia, and then he goes off to the desert. He wrote a book called The Practicos, The Practical Life of the Christian. What is the practical life of the Christian? Well, the practical life of the Christian is to avoid evil and do good. That is, live out the virtuous life, avoid vice. Live out the grace of God, avoid sin, do not commit sin. Now, that's the precept of the Christian life, but how do you practically do it? And so, the fathers, particularly our monastic fathers and mothers, by the way, teach us how to do that. And I'm going to be brief, but there's so much writing about this. The the desert fathers, the desert mothers, a vagaries of Pontus, the practical life. There's St. John Cashin on his eight principal vices and virtues. There's St. Gregory as well, who writes about the seven capital sins. So there, there are many writings out there in the early church about this particular topic. Now, what Jesus is talking about is the sin of lust, clearly, right? Or fornication. What happens is that when we allow the logismoi, the evil thoughts, and the desert, the desert fathers call them the demons that afflict mankind or our own evil thoughts that afflict us. When we allow these thoughts that begin here to enter here, that's when the sin is committed. You say, well, okay, how do I avoid the sin or the vice to enter my heart? Well, you have to do the work of the practicos, of the practical work of the Christian. That is, it begins up here in the mind. And so the practice is the life, the spiritual life. That is, Lexio Divina, spending some time meditating on the Word of God, spending some time in devotional prayer or regulatory prayer or what they call the Uh, prayer of the heart, like the Jesus prayer. We know that from our Eastern brothers and sisters. And when we spend time in contemplation and meditation and in Lectio Divina, we start to build up virtue. So that when the logismoi, when that evil thought hits our mind, we immediately have kind of like a firewall. And so that firewall protects our heart. But if we don't build up our spiritual lives in a practical way, then we have no firewall. And so much of our life is actually on the way to building up virtue to protect us actually from our very own selves. The vice of lust, or also fornication, according to the monastic tradition, is the part of the natural order of things. So it's natural that uh, a man may look at a woman in a particular way and vice versa. Evagrius says the sin or the the vice that, that most afflicts our humanity is the vice of pride because when we commit the sin of pride, we place ourselves in the, at the in the center instead of God, instead of Jesus. 
So much of our life is to move ourselves out of the center and placing God, placing Jesus there. But we only can do that if we live that practical life every day of the Christian. Prayer, meditation, Lectio Divina, forgiveness, the sacramental life. And then we become, I love that phrase from the Second Vatican Council, the church as the sacrament to the world. Then we become like the sacrament to the world. Then we become like God's presence to others who are afflicted by these same vices. We can be compassionate. Can, we can suffer with those who suffer these same vices. So this gospel is very important to the practical life of the Christian. But we have to begin because if we don't do it, oh my gosh, who's out there to show the world that in fact what Jesus says, we can live a virtuous life. We can live in chastity. Speaking of chastity, chastity is the ability or the virtue that uses no one as an object of pleasure, nor for one's own good, but sees everything, everyone, as God's gift. When we can kind of grow in that deeper sense of what Jesus is hinting at here, then we become the sacrament of the world. Then we become the great missionaries. But it takes time. So, I encourage you, if you haven't began your practical life, begin it today. Do a two or three minute examination of conscience. See where your mind is. See where your heart is. And if your heart isn't right, go to confession. And then begin that process. And it's sometimes every day. Until at a certain point, we become so used to the life of virtue, so used to the practical life, it becomes like second nature. Well, I think I've said enough about this, but this, this is really at the heart of the Christian life, what Jesus is saying in this particular gospel. So I challenge you, brothers and sisters, and I'm not perfect at this, to begin today the practical life of the Christian, that is, living out virtue, avoiding vice, not just for our own sake, but for those in most need to know that this is actually possible. To God's glory, amen. Peace.